Hello, my name is Tess Granock, and I am a research data and scholarly communications librarian at the University of Massachusetts Chan Medical School, which is located on the traditional land of the Nipmuc, both past and present. While a land acknowledgement statement is an important initial step, it is not enough. It is a necessary decolonial practice that promotes Indigenous visibility and social justice, reminding us that we are on settled Indigenous land. With that in mind, I'd like to bring attention to the Nipmuc Indian Development Corporation, who are assisting in the revitalization of the Nipmuc Indian community through the promotion and provision of culturally appropriate community and economic development programs. For more information, please visit nippi.org. And to find out more about the Indigenous people where you are, I recommend searching your location on Native Land Digital at native-land.ca. How are data visualizations made? In this module, we'll cover how to create a data visualization and questions to consider when choosing a data visualization tool. A good data visualization requires four things, information or data, a story or concept, a goal or function, and a visual form, which acts as a metaphor. To create a data visualization, you first need to identify your question or goal, then identify the audience for your results, and collect and analyze the data that you need. Once you have identified your message, audience, and data, you'll need to choose the visualization that fits your needs. If you're using visualization software, it might be useful to sketch out the chart you're envisioning first before trying to make it in the software. So when you start creating your visualization in the software, uh, you can focus on the technical aspects as opposed to juggling both technical aspects of the software and figuring out what you want your final chart to look like. Once you have your basic chart created, you'll also want to apply good design concepts to highlight your message. And throughout the process, edit as necessary, it's always useful to get a second opinion on a visualization to ensure your message is clear, especially if you can get that second opinion from someone in your target audience. There are many tools that you can use to create a data visualization, from pen and paper to point and click software such like Excel and Tableau, to coding languages like R and Python, or even multimedia materials like Metal and Fabric. So when you're trying to decide what tool to use for your visualization, there's a series of questions that you can ask yourself to help you determine the right tool for the job. Am I using the tool for exploratory work, analysis, or both? Will the tool make the chart I want? Is the tool free or available to me? And will it continue to be available after I leave my institution? Some institutions provide free access to software, but depending on the visualization, you may want to access the software after you leave the institution. This question may also help you determine how much effort you are willing to put into learning the software if you know that you will be able to use the software once you leave your current institution. Which brings us to the next question. What is the estimated time to learn the tool and create the visualization in comparison to the final product? In other words, what is the learning curve? Is there a data processing workflow attached to the tool for easy updating of visualizations? Can the updates be automated? This question is especially important if you need to produce the visualization on a regular basis, such as a monthly or weekly report. Are the data and visualizations kept private within a tool until shared? Is there a limit to the number of private visualizations I can have? Does the tool export in the formats I need, such as vector or PNG, JPEG, or PDF? Does the tool import data in the formats I have? The export and import formats may not be deal breakers if you are easily able to convert or get a different format of the data before it is imported into the tool, or you're able to convert the export of visualization afterwards. While the previous questions apply to all scenarios, the following additional questions may or may not be useful based on the type of visualization you're trying to create. Does the tool document the steps needed to reproduce the visualization? This is useful if you need to make many versions or iterate on previous designs. If I need to create an interactive visualization, what interactivity options does the tool provide? Does the tool support hosting for the visualization so that it can be shared electronically? Does the tool come with built-in data that I might use? Is the tool commonly used within my field? And do my colleagues and peers also know how to use it? This is especially important for collaborations, but also means you know people who can help you learn the tool. And using a tool that is accepted by the discipline 
will support any visualizations created by that tool. Can multiple people work on the same visualization at the same time? Or is there another way to share the visualization with my collaborators so they can edit it? If the coding library is imported from elsewhere, does it support all the features I need? For example, Leaflet is JavaScript, and our Leaflet implements most everything one might need, but Leaflet.js add-ons are mostly not supported. Sometimes the simplest tools, pen and paper, can be the most effective. Hand-drawn visualizations can evoke stronger connections between the viewer and the visualization as it increases the connection to the human element of visualization. As seen here in the work of Georgia Lupley from Dear Data and Mona Chalabi. Data visualization can also be a collaborative effort. So it's important to give credit to everyone who worked on the project from collecting the data, analysis to the final visualization. The credits on the right are the all the contributors to the New York Times coronavirus world map as of September 21st, 2021. And there are a lot. This video is part of a series of lectures recorded to teach about basic data visualization concepts. It was designed by members of the Visualizing the Future Symposia project and was made possible in part by a national forum grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. This content is designed to be used freely. See the video description for more information about this lecture series and the Visualizing the Future Symposia project.